What's going on guys, Phil here from Crack Corner, welcome back to another Workshop Wednesday. As you can see, the chairs aren't finished yet. We're finishing them today, uh, I wasn't too well last weekend, I was being a bit sick and just felt really ill. Uh, so, I didn't get to finish them at the weekend, uh, I had some other jobs booked in Monday and Tuesday. And now it's Wednesday, we can get to finish them. Um, I have one done, I got the footage of that so I'll edit that into this one, I got that done. Thursday. It took a little while, which is why I didn't get the other ones done on Thursday, and then I was all over the weekend, like I just said. So, we're going to get these finished. Um, I'll show you the footage from doing the first one. I'll get these finished, and then I'll show you what they're like when they're done. So, uh, enjoy. Alright guys, so it's a couple of days later after I painted all these. They're nice and dry, and they look brand new. So, we're going to start with the fabric, and I've had a look online, and there's actually fairly easy way of doing these. What you need to do is pop these clips off here. So nice and gentle not to scratch the new paint. Any touch ups I'll just get done afterwards with a little brush. And then uh, yeah. you pop them four off and these four bolts that go through into the side uh, the bar across the top that pops out and you can squeeze them together so it's easier to get the fabric in and then you pop that bar back in that's the tensioner bar and then that will pull the fabric tight again you want to measure the chair before you start taking it apart so that you know the right dimensions to cut the fabric with the right tension to keep it tight just measuring between the slots 45 centimetres exactly and then uh, you want to add about an inch or so onto there uh, so so it's 45 centimetres exactly and then you want to add a little bit onto there just to fold the fabric around the spline that goes through and have it tensioned really well so you want to add about Two and a half centimeters onto that on each side so we've got 45 by 5 so we want to cut it at 50 across that way you want to check the top as well just in case and um, again that is exactly the same so it's 50 centimeters all the way across and then you want to measure fairly closely along this line if you had like a proper fabric tape measure you could get this more accurate but uh, I don't because I don't work with fabric that often so I'm just going to bend my tape measure just a bit and that equals oh, so you want to add a little bit extra onto there as well, around another two and a half centimetres. So we'll do it at 100 and, we'll just say 111. And then we can fold it over and get a nice joint on the end. And it'll look nice. So now I've got the measurements, I can take that one apart. All right guys, so this is a 10 millimetre socket that I need to undo this one. So I'm just going to get that off. Alright, so that's now off the chair. Like I say, this one will just pop off. Should do. There we go. That's the top tensioner. And then the bottom one is just really tight. But that'll probably just be tight there. I might be able to get away with running it through and not have to worry about that bit too much. So uh, let's head over and get the fabric cut size 
and I'll show you how we're going to loop it round and get it fitted into these slots. Alright guys, so we're over at my workbench, I've got the, the back of the chair set just there. As you see, these are the colours that are going on. We've got the royal blue which is going on the two chairs and the magenta which is going on the Jack and Jill set. So we don't need the magenta just yet. So this fabric is slightly different to the fabric that was on it. It doesn't have the holes in. Um, so that when if it is left outside, it will probably pool up in the bottom of it. But it's really strong, heavy duty waterproof fabric. And it was the only thing that I could find that I could get in the colours that she wanted to go on there and uh, so that was the choice of these fabrics so we should have enough and um, did a quick measurement before I ordered it and I ordered too much so it should be plenty right, so I've just set the back of the chair off to one side so I could unload the fabric all the way across and it'll make it easier for me to measure so I'm going to measure that get it cut to size and then we can start putting it on the chair back As I said before guys, I don't work with fabric so I don't have all the stuff to be working with fabric perfectly but um, I do know that this end is straight so that if I measure from that end to here that will be straight line. Um, I'm going to get my me big metal rule, that's not a rule, it's just a big metal straight line and I'm going to mark all the way down. Uh, I can see my pencil mark so uh, it's alright. Right, so that's all marked out. I can see where the line is. I'm not sure if you can see it. It starts here, right where my finger is, runs all the way up. Uh, I'm just going to cut it with non fabric scissors. So shout at me as much as you want. But this is more rubber than it is fabric, to be honest. So uh, I'm not that worried about it fraying. Okay, that's the first one cut off. Uh, I'm going to fold this back up and put it to one side. Alright guys, so that's the first bit of fabric cut to width. I need to cut it to length, but as you can probably tell, right now, get this in shot better. When I bought this off eBay, uh, that really isn't a straight line. I mean, you can see my line's relatively straight. This is the manufactured edge that comes out of the factory. That's lined up pretty well there. And then my edge it's not perfect but I mean it's only maybe one or two millimeters out in this section here but that's being folded over and seamed anyway so it doesn't make that much difference so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this square straight myself from this side and then I'm gonna measure remeasure it so let's get my square on one of these edges it's probably not going to be perfect again, but it's going to be a lot better than that. Right, so I'm going to mark this across here. Like so. And there's no point, I'm not cutting both of them, I'm just going to cut the one. I just folded it just to show you an example of how not straight it is when you buy something uh, off eBay. So just double check before you start taking measurements from one side that that side is straight. If you have a manufactured edge like I do, then that's the best edge to go from because you can almost guarantee that that is straight. It's not going to be 100% perfect. So just double check everything. This is why you cut oversize and fold it to be straight afterwards. So I've now got a relatively straight edge on this side here uh, that I can measure from that way just to get the measurement that I need. Again, we added a few centimeters, two and a half centimeters to the top and the bottom just to 
give us that little bit of extra to fold over. So what we need to do now, we need to flip it over again and we need to fold the top and the bottom the right amount so that it totals the full amount of the, the chair height. So it's not much, it's uh, 12 and a half centimetres on each side, it's 12 millimetres on each side. Instead of using a big tape measure, I'm just going to use my angle finder steel ruler. Uh, watch this there, where it is, so it doesn't start twisting around. And this, I've got millimeters all the way across the front, and I can just measure 12 millimeters in on that side, and then I can measure 12 millimeters in on that side, and we can fold it over. Alright guys, so I'm not sure how this is going to turn out, this might be a bit of a too too small of a seam on each side. Um, maybe I got the instructions slightly wrong but I should have cut it a little bit bigger. Uh, I've got enough fabric left over to be able to do another one anyway, um, to do both chairs again. Uh, so I'll give this a test, we'll have this as a test run and we'll see how it goes. If it turns out well then it's alright, if it doesn't then I'll redo it. Alright guys, so I'm going to use my favourite glue, Mitre Bond, to stick this together just so we can give it a test and everything and we'll see how it turns out. Alright guys, so we've got both those sides done, uh, we need to do the front and the bow. We need to do the top and bottoms done. We need to do the sides now uh, to wrap around the spline. Um, these are the splines that were in there. They're slightly misshapen because of the way they were. But I'm hoping that will kind of work in my favour. I just need to figure out how much needs folding over for each one. And then I can get that done there and then I can run them inside. Um, probably really worried about the mitre bomb not sticking but because this is kind of rubber backed it kind of fuses the rubber together like melts it and uh, yeah so it should hold fairly strong. I'm going to be testing these chairs out anyway and if I sit on it and fall through then you'll have something to laugh at. So yeah there's that. Uh, so I'm going to mark these ready to go and then I'm going to get the spline folded through. It should be uh, 25mm from each side so I'm going to mark that, I'm going to fold it, I'm going to check it just to make sure it's the right width and then uh, we can go from there. Alright guys, so that's both sides done. Uh, I'm not entirely confident that the spline's going to run through. I'm not entirely confident it's not going to break when the spline's running through. 
So I'm going to try and run the splines through. If I can't get them through, then I'm going to have to call it a day and start again with another piece. All right, so I'm hoping that I can slide this through. I'm not going. I managed to get it to there, and there's all that left. Uh, I think this might just be too tight, really. All right, guys, so we've got the chair set up. We're going to get this put back on, and we're going to get it bolted into place. guys so the two blue chairs are done we moved on to the pink chairs these ones are much much easier uh, on the blue chairs uh, as you saw on the other one the tension bar was welded on these ones you just pop these metal clips off these plastic clips off even if I can no nope, none of these ones are easy there we go I had to pop it open with a screwdriver it's hard to do one-handed and hold the camera so you just pop those off and as you can see there's this little rod with a pinhole in it you just stick a, a screwdriver or any other round solid object in there and you can undo this so these bars will slide together and that'll give you a bit more slack in between these to be able to slide it in easier and then all I need to do is these four there's two there two at the back pop them off undo them bolts I don't need to take these off just need to loosen that and drop that right down and then I can pop that back on afterwards and it makes it much much easier than the way the blues one, blue ones were. As you can see this came out really nice, the tension is nice and even all along there and on these blue ones. The second one was a bit better but the tension isn't quite strong under here where I wanted it to be. Um, this one's a bit better there. There was a little kink in here that I couldn't get out because of the way the tension bar is at the back. Uh, that's the best I could get that. That was actually folded over and it came right across to here and folded in half so that's the best that's getting so if you have these type then nice and easy to change the fabric on if you have the ones where they're welded it's a lot more difficult you have to mess about knocking them uh, bending the tension bars at the back and trying to bend that straight and getting a good tension on there and then you use the screws at the side to help tension that up even more Alright guys, so the chairs are all done, all finished, I uh, just need to put the glass in but that's at the lady's house so I'm going to go there, I'm going to clean up the glass, I'm going to put it in there and that's going to look brand new as well. So uh, here they are, blue ones, I'll give these blue ones a wipe down with a wet cloth just because I got sawdust on the front and uh, yeah you can just see the handprints and everything so I'll give them a good wipe down see a little bit of a handprint here so I'll just let that dry and uh, we'll give it another go tomorrow. Blue ones not as happy as I am with the pink ones they still look great they still look brand new still look absolutely amazing but the pink ones are even better check these out how good do they look the reason these ones turned out better than the blue ones is because of the tension bars on these it's got three separate tension bars and you can actually tension them up properly yourself whereas the blue ones they're welded in so they are set at that tension and you can't stretch it more than what it is uh, as it was it was really tough to get that blue fabric in uh, keeping that tension and trying from there but the pink ones I could bring these really close together and it would made it really easy to slide the material in there and then I could tighten it really really tight 
and get all the wrinkles out and have them looking brilliant. So all the rubber grips are ready on those as well for the glass to sit on top of. Just looks absolutely brilliant. I'm really happy with them. What do you guys think? So that's it for this workshop Wednesday. I hope you guys had fun watching me struggle with getting the blue ones done. Uh, hopefully there's some tips and tricks in there that help you out if you're going to be doing this project. If you like the way they look, then give me a thumbs up. If you want to see me do more jobs like this, let me know down below what you think I should do next. And hit that subscribe button so you can follow along and watch everything that I get done. So thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one.